I just finished doing some rounds of testing and I had some anomalies that kept coming up and at this point only uh, better hardware than what I have would be able to take care of this to find everything with the exact numbers but let me explain it so everybody understands it and understand why it's so important everybody knows that I put my actual Tesla coil to my top disk and I got 20 Hertz out of it and some people go well how do you know if it didn't go lower if it didn't go higher or is it just the back pressure causing it and then you hook your center plate in and you get a frequency from your center plate instead of your top disk you get an anomaly it's not 20 Hertz anymore it's now something else so as you're running this thing you start to get your piezo buds are going what happens it changes again please understand all of this process takes place for a reason I don't know what kind of mastermind Alexi is but I could tell you the guy must be smart this is a real simple concept so let me try to make you understand it if I took a speaker you know I, I don't need all the paper stuff and all that I just need the coils and I took a magnet then I took another one in the center and I ran it up and this is all it did you go well okay that's a speaker you're just you're missing the paper parts so that you can make the sound okay now you take a Tesla coil I still have the magnet part now I have energy going up and down in the center you go okay not quite a speaker but it's close right so now that you know that okay what is the one thing you don't ever do around speakers don't put your microphone to the speaker why because it gives you the loudest sound in the world light bulb what happens in that process you are shoving something that is receiving a signal back down to one that's transmitting the signal and it makes a very loud sound giving you the highest pitch possible that you can get out of the whole thing until it shuts off now when you put energy into your gravity flyer understand this you are putting it into the center plate top disc and bottom disc have high voltage center plate has the tesla coil as the energy around the center plate grows it's right here probably a millimeter off the plate it then goes to the top and bottom disc and touches it when that happens the energy that's already putting in by the high voltage on those discs now increases it doesn't create a crazy crazy type of energy it is not one that fights each other and sparks together like this it is an energy that works together to raise the actual amount of energy into it now the piezo buzzer itself it's receiving the signal so it receives then it transmits the signal what happens when you amplify the energy in the center plate and it gets amplified throughout the two plates you are now going to receive a different signal in the piezo buzzer but it's also always going to transmit it now here's the understanding it's just like the microphone I now have in that piezo buzzer my microphone and I'm going to shove it right down my Tesla coil not going to attach it to my Tesla coil. We're not going to be nice about this. We're going to shove it right down the throat of that Tesla coil, right down there. What is that going to do? It's going to give me the highest amplitude possible of any frequency that's in the gravity flyer. Here's the understanding. I'm putting one in. I now get one back. I now have created a point where I'm shoving this thing in there and I'm shoving all the energy in there the Tesla coil stops functioning like normal it gets up to this point you get here then the top four inches of your Tesla coil is completely different sound just like it was when we hooked it to the top disc it is changing it now we hooked it to the center plate it is now changing that frequency where is the highest amplitude possible in that center disc well 
it isn't in there when you run it on your oscilloscope without energy. It has now taken on the piezo buzzer frequency as well. So it brings it to an amplitude much higher. But how do we get to the anomaly? See, Jared picks up one megahertz, right, of energy. We had people who have Tesla coil lifters in the gigahertz. How do I ever get that amplification? If I'm picking up megahertz in it, and I put it back into the Tesla coil, I have now created a distortion. The highest amount possible. The only way you can get to any type of gigahertz in this is to do it in this exact way. You must force it back in. That is exactly the process that's going on here. You cannot find it in normal operation without the extra amount of energy. You cannot find it without the piezo buzzer running. You have to understand the entire thing as a whole. And once you understand the circuit as a whole, now you understand why it works. The top four inches of our Tesla coil was a dead giveaway. We didn't listen. The piezo buzzer picking up one megahertz or more. We did not listen. When we were told that the actual top disc would give you the same frequency in the top four inches of that Tesla coil, we didn't listen. We always try to fight the answer. When you stop and look at the answer and accept everything, now you understand the process. You want a fishing reel sound? Take two frequencies as the highest possible amount, push them together with a ton of energy. You're going to get this thing to squeal like a pig. And that's exactly what it does. And that's exactly what it did. As I fried four power sources for my high voltage just lately. Because I kept the energy way too high. And then I brought in the Tesla coil. With a bigger Tesla coil. Please understand this. My actual Tesla coil right now starts to make funny sounds. And that will be some of the testing I'm going to show you in the next week. This is the understanding of what Alexi was doing. How does he get so much out of it? That's the exact process that's going on. Now I asked Jared to run this test. I hope that he honestly does. Because when you isolate the bottom portion of your testicle and the top portion, and you're able to pick up sensors on both, now you're able to pick up exactly what's going on. You know exactly by how much it pushed back in, where it came from, and what happens. Now it should start to click. We should start to really start to understand this thing. Where is the amplitude we need to find? Well, you're not going to find it in normal operations. Not until everything's into it. Why can Alexi find it and we can't? Because it's not something that you set. It's something that it does naturally. Based on the amount of voltage that you're putting into your Tesla coil is how much it's coming back and hitting a reverb inside your Tesla coil. Isn't that the funniest thing? As you put it in, it goes, puts it right back to you and then it creates a point that amplifies everything and takes that actual uh, frequency right to the roof. So what happens? The piezo buzzer is delivering it right back so it picks it up in your center plate. It's a causality loop. It's the center plate and the piezo buzzer are tied together. As soon as you put that Tesla coil on there and put it down the throat right there, they were tied together. So it's always going to receive and it's always going to transmit at all times. So that's the understanding right there. That's the whole Tesla coil. If you can understand this process, please understand this. It only happens when that center plate's thin. It only happens when you get the right frequencies in there. It only happens when you have the right energies in there. So, here's another understanding for you. Why aluminum? Why not copper? Why not steel? Why not some fancy material? The answer is eddy current. It has always been eddy current. It's what couples the capacitor. But it's also eddy current because of the way energy flows. 
if I tell you I got a disc right here or a coil, I have a coil. You say, okay, turn it on. Where's my coils field? It's right there. Pretty simple. We're not trying to fool anybody. What if I put aluminum in it? Right here. I just put another disc of aluminum right above it. You say, well, Nathan, the, the aluminum has eddy current in it, and it would push down on that field a little bit. Now, it may penetrate over, but it's still pushing down on the field. No, okay. What if I amplify the eddy current by putting more energy into it? You say, well, then it would push down more on that, on that center field, wouldn't it? You go, okay, but what if I just put voltage into aluminum, can I still get the field? Well, it's going to resist the metal and have a field on the outside because it's going to stay that way. You go, okay, so what if I rotate it? What if I rotate that disc going into that field? What happens then? Ah, so you picked up some more energy into it. Now what do you have? You now have a field here that's trying to push up against the disc and push down against the disc and it's trying to get fatter as it tries to expand. It's like this, it's trying to get real fat and then it has to get real skinny going into it because it cannot get past those two plates. So now you got this amount pouring out the edges, okay? It's like me when I put my pants on, okay? You get a big old muffin top going on. That's what's going on here, okay? You're getting that energy to spill out the sides. Now it's compressed. Now you're pushing down on that. You're, when you push down on that, what happens? Well, those rotating discs are picking up that energy. It's having that rotation in there and it's picking up more energy. That's why it's blowing out my power sources because it's pushing it back in. It's pushing it back to the high voltage source. So I have to turn it even further down. As long as it's on and it can polarize the disc and create a charge on it, I don't have to run it very high. I don't have to have a whole lot of high voltage in it at all. Matter of fact, the less is better. I always turn that thing way down. The whole point was is pushing the button in the beginning to get it to actually polarize. You're changing the fields. So what is all this energy doing right there? Well, we, we know it's the muffin top. We know it's coming out. We also know by doing field research, okay, I, when I say field research, I mean research on the actual fields of the gravity flyer. We know that we have a ball of energy around it holding everything in. Now we know we have this center plate that's bulging out right here. And it's, it's creating a massive amount of voltage in there. It has now increased the capacitance of this capacitor between the top and bottom plate. Wow, right there. We know it happens. This isn't something that's new. We know about fields. We know they cross each other. What we didn't realize is the high voltage and the Tesla coil work so well together. That's something that we did not know. And only in testing are you gonna find that out. The two are not working against each other in a violent voltage. They're working together to create a higher voltage. Now you should start to understand something. When this thing polarizes, and it's going to, why do you have it on the ground? You say, when I take my lifter and I put it on the ground or I put it on a table, right? Best example, piece of aluminum, take a high voltage flyback, connect it to it, turn on the power, sucks down to the table. Okay, well, it must have must have changed the charges in it so now they align to hold together right you go well how's that gonna be good for us now we're trying to go up we're not trying to go down but let's just understand what jared said when he was on an alt propulsion alexi got this thing to jump he got this thing to tip over how do you get something to jump that's real simple you put enough pressure on the bottom just like, you know, you're in a waterbed, push down the waterbed, center comes up. That's a pretty simple concept, right? We all understand that. What do you think you're doing here? There is so much pressure being put down that now when you change the field, it's going to jump. That's one of those moments you should stop and think about. If he's, the inventor is telling you it's jumping, what is the quickest way to the process of getting that? 
You're not going to go over and put basketball player legs on this thing and get it to hop around. That isn't going to happen. You now have to use some kind of process to get this done. Therefore, you must flip the field. Now, what happens when you got this angry muffin top sitting in here and you need to change the field? Well, you're going to have to find a way to do it. You need to find a way to take that top disc and push it down into there. Now that you have plenty of megahertz or gigahertz or whatever frequency you're getting out of your Tesla coil along with the power, guess what? You now have a way to do it. Now, the question is, does it just go in there and push harder? Or does it get in the field on the little muffin top and does it actually infect it? So, we know when you put positive to negative, you can overwhelm that charge and make it take on the other one. And then as soon as you uh, stop doing that, it goes back to where it was. Well, if you think about it as an infection, then it goes in there and it changes it temporarily. And then when you're done changing it, you come out. And then you go, okay, it goes back to normal. So how would we understand lift in this way? We know he's getting it to jump. We know that field charge and changing the charge makes it jump. So, that was the key moment right there. In order to make it jump, field charge must be changed. We know it cannot be changed forever, but it can be changed temporarily. We are going to have to override this thing. Now, when it's sucking down so hard, you want it to pop up, immediately change the charge. What happens? Boom, it floats away. You go, well, have we seen this before? Yeah, we have. Take a coil, take a rod, put an aluminum ring on it. Turn on the voltage. What happens? The aluminum ring flies off. You have now changed the polarization in both from nothing to completely hates each other. Just like that. That's how it jumps. We've seen the process and other things. We just didn't, you know, say, hey, this is it. You know, ding, 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 we found it. No, it takes a little while of understanding this thing to get there. But that's exactly what's going on. We're not trying to reinvent the world here. We're just taking every anomaly that you can find. And this is what this guy uses. It's not, it's not hey, let's go to physics one-on-one. No, that guy has no idea about that. So what does he do? He finds a, a problem in the circuit. And normally you just say, okay, I'm going to have a problem, I'm going to throw it out, and I'm going to erase it and get rid of it. Well, this guy's amplifying those problems. That's what he's doing. So it's like opposite world. So everything you think and everything that you want to know about this, find the anomaly in it. What was it? Did you trace it down? Did you find it? Because that's what I had to do to get to this. It, it, it wasn't about smoothing it out. It was about amplifying the anomaly. So... Just understand this. We know that it's doing it too. It's not like we didn't see it. We're over here with our little meters and going, oh, look, man, look at this. We got this side. It says positive here on the top. It says positive on the top of the center plate. It says negative on the bottom of the center plate, negative on the bottom. Exact reading we get when we start. Then you go, okay, if I run this at a certain level, it starts to overwhelm the middle plate. And then it starts to get one thing, but it's not getting all of it gone on the top. Then, as soon as you get it all gone on the top, all of your systems start going crazy. And you're like, well, I didn't really understand, but now I maybe should go back and look at that because there was an anomaly there. Did he exploit that anomaly? And he did. He created the charge to infect it, and then it would go. Now... What's the problem with all the research that we've done on this? Because Jared's done it several times. What's the problem? If you don't understand how the Tesla coil part plays into this, in order to get you that extra energy and extra frequency, it'll be minimal. It'll show up on all your scopes as an anomaly. And it'll be a strange reading. But you won't see the effect that you want to see because you don't have the other effect mastered. Once you do, now you can start to see it. I can tell you right now from looking at all the stuff on there, every time I look at Jared's stuff and I see all, all these frequencies going and everything like this, understand this. 
he's right there. I know he's right there. I know he's got to see what I see. I can see it without the oscilloscope. I, I can only imagine how good he sees it. But it, I don't know that he knows to look for it as much as I know to look for it because I'm seeing the physical reaction from it. I'm getting the physical reaction. What I'm not getting is the precise number on it. If he runs the test and he looks back at his test, matter of fact, I can go back right now and look at every single one of his videos that he put out. And I can point out the anomaly right then and there. As soon as it happens. As soon as he picks up an energy and didn't pick it up enough. As, as soon as he hit the anomaly with his motors and everything, and it's starting to trace like this, exactly what's going on. As soon as he starts hitting megahertz frequencies, why is he doing it? The piezo buzzer only goes to kilohertz. It doesn't make any sense. It's an anomaly. It's not something that happens every day. It's not something that happens by chance either. We're building UFOs here for God's sakes. We're not making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. We're looking for the oddballs. We're looking for the strange things. This is what this is. If physics could explain it right away, they would have already done it. Trust me, Todd tells me all the time. He probably thinks I'm an insane old man. At this point, I don't care. The bottom line is, we found a way to do it. The only way to get this thing to vibrate hard enough is to give me a massive megahertz frequency in that center plate. Give me a gigahertz frequency. Let me resonate the living daylights out of this thing. And let me have enough power to overwhelm everything. Because what you may not understand about the power part, why do I want so much power? Why do I, I think the testicle has so much more than what I think, than what everybody else would think, okay? I know when it creates it right here, right? We see that part. We, we can say, okay, we can get our head around that. In doing the research on the fields, it's not holding in enough. Every time you get an EMP, you have a weak Tesla coil. It's telling you your high voltage is turning into static electricity. And there's too much static electricity. It's going past the point of where the bubble of the Tesla coil is. Here's the bubble of your Tesla coil. Your static electricity is going out from that. So you have to realize this when you do the field. I flip mine inside and outside to understand this. But that's the exact process going on there. When you're getting EMP, your Tesla coil field's not it's not thick enough. It's just not thick enough. So the high voltage overwhelms it and comes on the outside and pushes out further, and you start to get an EMP effect. What you're getting when it pulses is it'll shut things down. And that's what happens. It'll shut down your motors, it'll shut down your drivers, it'll shut down everything. If it gets that far, your computer is shut down. What's the only way to correct that? You have to give the field enough strength. Now, I'm not saying overwhelm it where it's super difficult, but you got to give it that strength. What are you going to find? Here's one of the strangest anomalies of all. Your plate on your center plate is cold. It's 74 degrees. The outside is enough to burn your finger. So... What's so important about that? If you tell me that your Tesla coil field is right close to the edge, if it's like your center plate and it's right there on the outside, what happens? The friction creates the heat and it'll put it on the outside. What also happens? If you're taking gravity waves that come down, they all have energy. All that energy is finding the closest point it can to infect what you're doing. It's going to come to the outside ring and it's going to sit right there. What does that mean? You're blocking those things from coming straight down on it. You're forcing them to go around. Exactly what Alexi told you was going on. He put his plate, he drew a little bubble above it, and he told you gravity waves were going around it. That explains why it's hot on the outside to burn your finger but the inside is cold. This guy tried to explain it. Maybe he's not a great orator. Maybe he can't get the point across. I don't care what his language is, guys. 
I don't even watch it with the volume on. I simply look at the science, and the science is going to tell me something. Because he could say everything in the world, it's probably going to be not something that is even going to relate to it. Half the time he starts talking about some other inventor, and you're going to have to do a lot of research. And then you're going to chase your tail. I prefer to watch it with the sound off. I want to know for myself what's going on. Can I put the pieces together to see what happens? Then I'm going to go back and look at everything he's building on his channel. What is leading him to believe that this is the answer? That's where the breakthrough happens. If you follow the chain of events and you repeat them, you then have your answer. He found an anomaly. And because he found an anomaly, he found a way to exploit it. That's as simple as that. Guys, not one piece on this gravity flyer am I going to change. It's going to stay the exact way it is. The only thing that I'm going to do is create more compression between that top plate and that middle plate and the bottom plate. That compression level, I'm going to squeeze the living daylights out of this capacitor. The eddy current in it couples the bottom disc and the top disc and the center plate all in one big peanut butter jelly sandwich with an extra piece of bread. There you go. That's about it. Get hungry because it's going to be a lot of bread. So, coupling all together through the eddy current now creates a better energy flow on a capacitor. You have to remember, the air inside this has to be charged. You say, well, how do you know how to charge air? Okay, smart guy, charge air. Don't have to. Every time we have a magnetic field, it charges the air. It's already done for us. We know when we rotate it, it charges the air around it. Now what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to make it charge it more. That's the whole point of bringing it as close as you can. Where do I not want to spark? Between my Tesla coil energy and my center plate? And my upper plate, because it's the closest possible thing. Energy always finds a way. Electricity always finds a way to get to the easiest point possible to create the spark. By putting your plate down there, you are trying to put a spark from your high voltage is now amplified because of the Tesla coil to be able to spark to your center plate. Trust me, I put it to every bolt on this whole thing. It likes to spark everywhere. It's just any kind of metal it can find. I did a high voltage test and it showed an anomaly. Guess where it sparked? Right on the bolts that hold the fan motor in. That has nothing to do with high voltage. There's no part connected to that. It's isolated by a bunch of plastic. Why is it sparking on there? Because energy finds a way to find something it can spark to. This top plate and the center plate cannot spark over. You will never get those brushes to not spark over unless you run almost no voltage. I'm sorry, I do it at very low volts. 30 volts on a Tesla coil, you know, maybe 12 volts on the high voltage going in. That'll make it spark over. And if you go on such a low voltage, game over. I guess if that's the way you think about it, good luck with the little tiny light show. Guys, I'm not into little tiny light shows. If you ever watch my channel, let's go big. Let's, you know, let's get some light shows. But let's, you know, I'm not afraid to burn something to the ground to prove a point. Let's do it. That's the answer there. If we know it's swelling it, we know it's creating pressure in it. And, and let's go to the pressure one more time. If we know the Tesla coil field's thicker, what happens to the high voltage you can't get out? We know that we're rotating a disc and we're spraying that stuff everywhere. It's like a sprinkler in your front yard. What happens when you put a bag around that sprinkler? It fills up. Just like we're doing here. If your Tesla field's not strong enough, it's going to get out. And it's going to go ruin all your equipment. But if you can continue to keep that pressure in, now you have a pressurized chamber. You have a bubble. Everybody wants to know if this thing can run in space if that's the case. If it's creating a pressurized bubble of its own and it's creating O2, guess what? It can. Say, so, well, there's no air in space. That would be incorrect. You didn't do your homework yet. 
there is air in space there's just not much of it so it's same thing when you get in here in your little pressure chambers you're gonna find that out your spark goes great on the Tesla coin in the chamber goes crazy then you overload it by taking out too much air and the spark goes down and sucks around the little piece of wire yeah but we can still run ion motors in space we, we you know, the ion thrusters still run how are they doing it you know what I mean if you can't do that well well we put gases into it guys it's the pressure that kills the ion wind in space is what you're telling me but it's not doing it in reality so please understand what you're saying is incorrect it actually will work and we're going to create a bubble around this and it's going to create its own atmosphere understand this eddy currents are so awesome aluminum is unbelievable because the magnetic field goes around the aluminum it pulls it in because it hates aluminum it pushes it out because the tesla field is always pushing out further the more that you increase the voltage pushes out the amount that you could put it into your center plate sucks it in you can take your little light thing and you go over to the center plate when the voltage is high enough and it'll go tink 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 but it's not doing it because you're sitting there whacking it you're not the kid over there in the store whacking stuff with sticks it's pulling it down to it it's creating that gravity well guys you have to go beyond the physics to understand this then you can start to see what's going on none of this is a lie all of it is in testing I can start this thing up tomorrow and show it I'll be showing it here in the next week or two in testing all it's doing the only thing I need to figure out is exactly how much on that Tesla coil needs to go in that's it this isn't rocket science here I understand where everything is all I'm doing is fine-tuning this thing down to a very fine amount of stuff when it ruins it when you get the spark from the upper plate to your middle plate that's when you have a problem guys magnets themselves they're shelled I hope you guys understand this there is a metal shell around the magnet it's like this and the magnet goes here it's only going up it does not go out so your ideas of the magnets playing a giant role in this more than what they do is wrong the magnets only go up they only take and transfer energy between the center plate and also the top plate and it's creating your capacitor errors in the middle so if you say the center is a dielectric it necessarily no not, in a way it is and in a way it's not your dielectrics air to the center plate center plate's not charged like your upper plate and then you got air again which is a dielectric then because they're all coupled the energy works in tandem because of that eddy current right here so they're all forced to work in this big sandwich and with that extra piece of bread that drives you nuts because if you're just saying a capacitor it doesn't belong there until you increase the energy of it and you can see it going from top to bottom because as soon as it does it goes around the muffin top and over to the other side and there you go you now have your capacitor this way this way all there in that capacitor and it changes how you view your capacitor it wasn't going to happen in open air by itself if you didn't have the magnets it doesn't work if you have too many magnets you're going to get too much vibration in your center plate it'll be the highest amount of energy amplified and it will suck and fall and and never work ever you have to put it in on a resonance level it cannot be physical vibration it has to be resonance guys it took a long time to understand this please it's the way it works it's going to show in the next few weeks of testing that I show you 
it's game over for this. This is this is where where it ends. This is where we put this energy in. We get the sucker start moving. You know, there's a lot of aha moments in this. There's a lot of people saying, well, this will never work because you can't do this or that because I was taught this way. Well, guess what? I'm going to do it anyway. Okay? I'm going to prove every little point that I said here. And you're just going to have to get over it. That's the way it's going to work. I'm going to eat my peanut butter and jelly, jelly sandwich and go home. That's it. I've already figured it out. I have the exact answer. I know exactly which process hits which process and why and where the amplification is. I hope that you guys watch this and understand it. That I've actually seen every little part of this. Guys, there's other adventures out here that have seen this as well. I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one that can see these kind of processes happening in their experiment. They get strange anomalies all day. And what do they do? The ones that are smart actually go in there and they exploit them and they get something far different than what everybody else gets. And you wonder, well, I did it all right. I did it all right. Well, you did it all right according to make the actual experiment work the way you thought it did. That's right. You did. But you didn't do it to get that extra part. And that's what we're here to do. I'm not here to create something that looks nice on my desk and rotates and I just smile at it once in a while. I have no desire to do that whatsoever, guys. None. Zero. Not going to happen. I don't like things like that. I get rid of them. I got to make it work. That's the way I worked, you know, like a dog with a bone. I'm not going to stop chewing until it's all gone. So I'm going to keep at this. This is where the understanding is. I just have to be able to know exactly how much energy to put in that Tesla coil. Now, it all depends on distance. I've gotten this thing to go from three feet to five feet. And it's not enough. If Alexi can stand away from this thing at six feet, and he gets a Gravito meter, and it's still reading. Understand this. When I'm out at three feet on my actual field, at a foot and a half is when my Gravito meter works. You do the math. You tell me how far I need to be out. Because the answer is going to be nine feet or more, or right around nine feet. That's how I know it's wrong. That's how I know exactly it's wrong. We got the right parts and we used them. We created the circuit like he did. We didn't look at the distances that he's at it. How are you going to judge anything on a field without knowing the distances? You're going to have to go back and watch it again. When can he pick it up? Where is it at? And how much is there? Because there's far more than what you think. Now, I, is the circuit wrong? Is it not wrong? Look, he said in one of his videos flat out. They wanted a thing for the Tesla coil. I went and looked in my book. This is a Tesla coil. This is the uh, exciter circuit. I put it in. I put it in diagram. That's what he said. It, it, sorry, that's what he said. Okay, I can't change what he said. I can't change what he did. Then he goes and goes. Okay, now not only am I going to do that, I'm going to send you circuits that do not match the circuits that I'm putting into my main diagram. They don't match at all. And you go, well, I identified the ones in the main diagram, but they're not the same ones that he sent me. Oh, you know, let's just be a different kit. Now, when you get the original, guys, there's something so wrong here. Can you get more out of the power that he put in his original? Yeah, because he, he is in Europe. It's 220 volts. There's an extra 100 volts there. You're going to have more power coming out of the gate. He didn't start with 110, he started with 220. Then he's breaking it down. I mean, I could find more power there. Give me 220 volts and I can start getting more power. I got a transformer that'll take my Variac right up to 220 volts. He's getting more power. And I keep trying to tell that people, I keep getting told no. And I keep getting told no again. Well, guess what? I'm going to do it anyway. This thing might be the biggest giant fireball experiment in the world. I might burn down my front yard. But you know what? I just don't care. I know it's there. He cannot get that distance without it. He just can't. I, I can't do it. You know, I may not be the best Tesla coil, you know, person out there, but I can get the thing to work. I mean, 
how much more is he going to get? And oh, it's so frustrating trying to say this. I'm, I'm like at the end of where I need to be. And I can't accomplish the end of it yet. I have one thing fighting me. And I don't like it. I don't like it at all. And every time I turn around, I keep getting questions about changing everything in the world about it. Guys, I'm not doing it. I'm not changing it. It doesn't. It works. It's showing that it works. I've shown everything in experiments that it does work. I just got to get people to understand it, I guess. Maybe that's my fault. Maybe I'm not very good at this. That's probably the truest answer there is. That I'm not conveying it well enough and I'm not saying it enough. And I'm not getting the point out there enough. That's probably where it is. Guys, I told you the process. The process works. It's all understandable. And it all is anomalies. And this guy exploited every single one of them. Guys, I wish you luck in building yours. I'm going to show in the next uh, couple videos everybody building theirs that are on Facebook. They have some awesome things, some solid state ones. They also have uh, their own that are hooked up with different power sources. Some people want to exploit voltages, guys. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not against doing a light show. God knows I've done it. So, you know, one day you'll find that I have the right answer. And you'll start seeing it all work, so. <laughs> it just picked up a lot of energy as soon as I tapped that thing. Get back down a little bit. Пошла, 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 пошла. Есть. Есть. If you like what you saw today, guys, please like, share, subscribe, and comment all day. And have yourself a great day. Thank you.